Hey guys, what's up? So last time we were able to see how to protect different endpoints from unauthenticated users on the client side. So in this one, we are going to set up an Axios interceptor to look out for when we have authentication errors from the server, and then we automatically log out a user on the client. So that will mean that if a user comes in here and tampers with this token, so let's say they put a C and they reload here, we should be able to log them out automatically. So the way we do that is if we go to our Axios, we need to go ahead and add some some more configuration but before we do that we need a request to test that with and the best one will be to try to get all our contact list so what you're gonna do is first set up an action to get the contact list it should be quick so here in actions we have auth i'm gonna create another folder for contacts and then in there i'm gonna have a file i'm gonna call it get contact get contact so it's going to be a function so export default it want to be taking in parameters so it's going to be doing axios instance dot get and we're going to be getting the url of course we need to import this and call get so the endpoint is going to be slash contact so slash contact then we call but then, so then we get the response. So we want to console log it for now. But of course, later we'll be updating the UI. So let's console log the data. So once there is an error, we can catch it and also console log it. Okay, so let's let's call this function whenever we are on the contacts. So if you go to the contacts container, you can see that we have contacts. So right here, what we're gonna do is have a use effect. So that will be like the component did mount. So we set the use effect that has an, an empty array of dependencies. Let's import use effect. So here we can call that action, but we need to pass it a dispatch. But for now, we won't be giving it a dispatch because we don't need to work with, with the reducer. So we can actually call it. So we can do get contacts like that. That takes in nothing. So this will be able to interact with the server and we can catch the responses here. So if you come over here on the app and reload, you can see if we check the network tab, you can see that we have a get contact, it's now pending. And once it is successful, you can start to get your token is invalid. So these are the errors we want to intercept so we can log out the user automatically. So what you can do is here in the Axios config we are also going to set up an interceptor so the way we set up interceptors is we can do axios which is the instance we have now then we call interceptors and then we call use so what you're going to be doing we are going to be intercepting responses so here we can get the responses so response okay so once we get the response we want to resolve it so we can do new promise because we need resolve and reject to resolve reject and then here we can resolve it. So resolve response, and this should be small. So if we have an error, we can also catch it here. So this should be an error function. Okay, so once we have an error, we want to check where the error is coming from. The error might be coming from the, the, the front end. Maybe a user doesn't have a connection. So you can first check that. So you can check if it's, there's no error with response. If the error is not from the server, then we want to show it to the user. So we can actually do the same thing. So we can return new promise. We just copy this, so return new promise, resolve, reject. So we want to reject, of course, with the error. So reject, reject with the error, okay. So this will handle that case. So otherwise, we want to check if the, the response code the response code is forbidden. So we can do that by <coughs> so we want to check the response code. So here we can do if error dot response dot status equals to the response code. So our Django server will be sending 403 when the tokens have issues. So once we get that, now we can remove the existing token from the from the storage. So you can okay. So once we remove it, we need to redirect the user to the login page. So I'm going to be showing you the way you can use the React router, the history itself. So we have a smooth navigation to the login. 
but for now i'm going to have a window redirect so window.location will be equal to slash auth slash login so if the error is not 403 meaning we can have other types of errors which are like 401 or the other ones then we want to send those ones to the user or 404 so those ones we can send them to the user so we can now return reject like this so reject so the catch is here we send the user away once we get the 403 and this is we can actually do another check to make sure that we are checking for specific things but if you want to customize it this is the starting point you're going to need to have okay so if once you come back here we get uh, axios instance to interceptors with use is not a function yeah so we want to be intercepting responses so we need to do response here okay so once you come over here you can see that you can see that it logs out the user once that error is there okay so actually it's, it's now it's now working okay so let's recap so what you want to do is you make sure you're not changing the, the normal way that access should work. So you handle all the cases and you mind your only one. So this is working well and good, but there is a problem with this guy. So one of them is we are rewriting re this page using this window location. So the, the best way that you can do this is to actually use the browser router. So we can do that by extending this Axios config to take in some parameters. So we can pass the browser history and use that to redirect at this place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to change all this into a function. So I'm gonna cut everything. So we're gonna cut everything up to here. And then we're gonna export default. It's gonna be a function, it's gonna take in some parameters. So one of the parameters it's gonna take in will be history. So we're gonna set it to null by default. But when we don't pass it, shouldn't complain so we have everything there and now meaning that now that we have changed the name of the file we need to rename this to axios instance so we can actually do that so let's see how we are import we are using it so like here we call it axios instance so i'm gonna rename this to axios instance so 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 that the import still works the imports for this still work okay so you see it gets an error and then clears it so you see now on the request for, for get contacts, we can pass the history. So if you come back here, we need to make sure that we are passing the history here. Okay, and also some things have changed. So since now this is a function, we need to be calling it like this and then giving it some parameters. So if we have the history, we can pass it. So I'm gonna do history. So that's gonna be sent from the component as a parameter. So we're gonna send history here. And for us to be able to send it, we can go to our contacts where we say use effect this and then we get the history. So you can get the history from the use history hook. So you can do his, history equals use history. So we pass it here. Okay, meaning that it's going to be available here. And once we instantiate our Axios, we pass it. So in Axios, we can bring it in and where we are redirecting which is here we can first check so we can check if we have it if it's not now and then we can use it so we can do history dot push so we're going to be pushing this okay so either way if we don't have it we can go ahead and use the window location it should work but hopefully this will never run and we'll be working with this. Okay, so let me go ahead and refactor the other endpoints because they might yell, yell at us. So here we can now, instead of using Axios like this, we can do that. Let's, let's look at the register. Also make sure we are doing it in a new way, like that. So the history is now, so if we don't pass it, it's okay. So let's take a look now. If we come back and reload, we get our login page. Let me log in here. Uh, let me put the password. Okay, so there is an issue. Cannot read property post of undefined. That we get undefined reading. So if we take a look at the Axios instance, since this is a function and we create it, we need to make sure that we are returning it. 
So let's make sure we are returning it. Axios instance. That when we call this, we immediately use it. So let's retry it. So username login. Boom, we are logged in. So if you go to our local storage here, let's go and change something in the token and then reload this page. You see we are logged out. And the transition is quite smooth. So for now, if we try to go there, we should be logged out by default. If a user goes to set the token himself like this, blah, 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 and then we reload, they shouldn't access anything. So they are logged out. So, and then they go to the page and then they reload. It's gonna go ahead and log them out still. Okay, so that's well and good. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.